This video is going to focus on the parts and function of a very common tool that we use in this class, which is called a compound light microscope. So the reason why they call it a light microscope is for reasons that it will become very obvious that there is a light source down here that you utilize to go through an object. Anything that is on a microscope must be at least translucent so that light can get through. If light is completely blocked, there will be no light that reaches your eye, and thus it will appear as basically a black spot on the, the microscope, and you will see nothing. The compound portion of this is that there are two lenses, and what that does in a lab you will recognize or see that it somewhat plays tricks on you, and you're going to somewhat walk through a step-by-step -step procedure that somewhat shows you how this microscope is a little bit trickier to follow because of that compound um, lens situation. So we'll go through some of these. Some of them you just have to know the name. Others of them have uh, functions that I do want you to recognize. This number nine structure, we're not going to go in numeric order, sorry if that uh, somewhat throws you off. But this is what I refer to as the ocular lens in probably lower level grades and stuff like that. They might call it an eyepiece. But an ocular lens is the first lens that you'll look through. Um, most often it has a magnification power of 10 times. So if you recognize in math class that X represents uh, times. So therefore, if I took that ocular lens and I just took it off the microscope and I looked at something, whatever I would be viewing would be 10 times larger than it was actually um, visible. So the ocular lens has that thing. So you're going to look through this and it will most often. There are some fancy microscopes that where you can change the ocular lens to a different range, but most standard ocular lenses will have a 10x. You should always look at your ocular lens before looking through to, to see what the power is. They will always recognize or note what the power is of the ocular lens. Number one over here is the body tube, which I call it. Um, don't necessarily know through the function. Um, it, it has to have a distance, I'm sure, between the two lenses for this to work, and the body tube just allows that distance to occur. Number two down here is what's known as the revolving nose piece. Not the rotating nose piece, not anything that you make up in your head, revolving nose piece. And what that does is it's going to adjust or change what are called the objective lenses. So those are numbers three, four, and five, which we haven't got to yet, but we might as well give them names and proper definitions at this point. The revolving nose piece, what you would do is you would change that manually, and what that will do is it will physically um, change the objective lenses that are found below. This compound light microscope has three different objective lenses. Based on this, they all have a different size. This is, I think, from my many years of experience, students do believe that this would be the smallest of the three, and so that's what we'll do. They are not low, medium, and high. Many students will get confused there. Number three, which is the smallest of the objective lens, this is called the scanning power. And they are objective lens, so I don't have enough room to write the whole thing objective. What this objective lens does is it magnifies because it has that lens characteristic. This, most often for a scanning power, is four times. So when you are defining their functions, you should know their relative powers. So the scanning power is four times, which if I had the ability to rip off just the scanning power and look at it, once again, it'd be four times. But in conjunction with the ocular lens, what you do is you multiply their individual powers together. So an ocular lens of 10, and a scanning power of 4 would multiply together to be a total magnification of 40. When you are drawing a specimen for someone else, you do have to recognize that they have to know how much enlarged is this, this picture. So you give them the total magnification. You don't just give them the scanning power or the ocular. You multiply them together, and that's what you would do. Number 4, which is this middle, this is actually low power. Most often, your low power is 10 times the size, so it, it has the same magnification power as the ocular lens. And finally, your high power. They are all objective lenses as well, if you want to add that to the labeling. So you have scanning power, low power, and high power. High power most typically has a 40x 
power. So therefore, the total magnification with the ocular lens on the standard microscope, this would be 400 times its actual size. Over here on the right, number 10, it's the arm, a lot of body parts. This is for holding. We're not going to hold you responsible for writing down the function. It's pretty uh, understandable when you see this. Number 11, this is the stage. A stage is used, and I use the terms very specifically. This is more of a support mechanism. It supports the slide. It does not hold it. If the slide was on the stage and you tip the microscope over, it would slide right off. That's not really a holding mechanism, but it supports it. What is actually going to hold this specimen or slide in place will be number six. These are stage clips. So that's where I would use the word hold. And I'm only giving you abbreviated functions. You can take the words that I'm saying here and elongate your functions. So don't feel that you only have to write down good note-taking strategy. Don't just write down exactly what I have. Kind of el elaborate upon what I'm saying in your own notes. So stage clips will hold the specimen or hold the slide to the stage. Over here on the, the right-hand side again, we have 12 and 13. These two knobs, um, if you move them, the stage will go up and down. Yes, that's what they physically do, but that's not the function. Why would you want to move the stage? There is a focal point, this imaginary focus line that goes across the, the stage. And your job as the person working the microscope is to get the specimen in line with that imaginary focus point. So the, the two knobs over here are 12 and 13. 12 is what's known as the course adjustment. Course adjustment, if you think of course in that spelling, course is like uh, sandpaper, rough. It has a, a larger degree of movement when you move this, this course adjustment knob. And what that does is it's going to focus, you use it primarily for focus, but it's for focusing, sorry my font, um, it's for focusing on scanning power and for low power because the stage will move. You'll actually physically see with your eye the movement of the stage. It's that large of a degree of movement. And so the focus, when you initially look at a, a slide under scanning power, there's a lot of room for it to move above and below that focal line. So this is used primarily to get it in initial focus. Whereas number 13 is fine adjustment. Once again, it's used for focus, but to delineate the difference between these two, this would be more or less used at the high power. You would never use course adjustment at a high power because um, there is on larger, more expensive microscopes that wouldn't be used for high school students, this, the objective lens could actually go right through the stage. They put a safety mechanism on high school ones because they know that students really don't pay attention to that and there would be breaking all these things because it's a lot of glassware that's involved. So that is fine adjustment. The two are both used for focus, but please differentiate when and where you would use them. Course adjustment for a larger degree of focus needs and fine adjustment for more fine, deta uh, fine detail. I hate to use the same word for its function, but that's what it's really used for. Number seven over here on the left is called a diaphragm. This is found underneath the stage. And many students forget that it's there, but it's really important if you actually can't see something. A lot of the reason why they can't see is because they haven't adjusted the diaphragm. The diaphragm is used to adjust the amount of light that gets through the stage. As I started this whole uh, introduction here, you need light to get to your eye in order to see the specimen. But if your specimen is so transparent that too much light gets through, then therefore it somewhat goes invisible and you can't see it. So you have to adjust the amount of light to allow less light to reach your eye, which then shows a little bit more detail. So diaphragm adjusts the amount of light. Number eight is your light source. And number 14 is your base. So some of these are just functional, uh, or sorry, parts that you need to know the name of. Others, you do need to know why they're there and what they are used for. So this is your standard 
There are many different types of compound light microscopes, but this is your most commonly used diagram that I've seen across the board. So that's why I wanted to use this one. And if you have any further questions, we will do a lab with it. I know it's a little bit harder just on a, a 2D image to go through it. But in class, I have a very similar microscope that I'll be walking you through as well.